Welcome to the Humble and Bold Podcast, where we discuss mentoring, marriage, ministry, and what's in the media. You're listening to Christina at humbleandbold.com and Scott at shofaroutreach.org. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Humble and Bold Podcast. You're listening to Christina at humbleandbold.com and I'm here with my husband, Scott with shofaroutreach.org. And this is episode two and it's titled, Why We Need to Pray for Those in Authority. So with this being an election year and also with the news um, of all the health issues with the royal family, we thought this might be a good time to talk about why we should pray and the importance of it. And Scott, do you have a... If I asked you, why should we be praying for those in authority over us? Well, the number one reason we should pray for those in authority is because the Bible instructs us to. So let's just start right out with reading from 1 Timothy chapter 2, where it says, Therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So the scriptures instruct us to pray for those in authority, pray for presidents, and pray for kings. And it's interesting too because seems like in recent um, times when it was an election year, things have gotten more, I mean, from the time when we were growing up, it didn't seem like it was that heated. And it just seems like it's gotten so divisive. Um, and that is something that really we don't want to um, partake in with that divisive uh, spirit. Or it's, it's almost like, it, it seems like that there's just this huge, division and divide and i think that it's important to know what you believe why you believe it what you're who you're voting for and why i'm not so sure that it's a good idea to put everything out there on social media and things get stirred up um, and arguments Um, it's very sad to see that yeah so as kingdom people christians we need to exalt the kingdom of god above the kingdoms of this world So it's fine to vote for political leaders, but uh, the political process should never, uh, it should never come above our allegiance to the kingdom of God and keeping unity with the brethren and unity with the spirit, uh, with, with Christians. And there, it does seem like there is a lot of division, not only in our country, but also within the church, um, and different viewpoints on that. I think that's why I know we tell our we tell a lot of people um, encourage them to read the Bible for yourself to spend time in God's Word to understand what God's Word actually says. There's so many people out there who claim to read the Bible and will say the Bible says this or the Bible says that, and they may not be giving it in full context. And so that's also extremely important to know the full context of the scriptures that you're reading. And I would just encourage all of you out there um, to. Pray about, uh, if you've never read the Bible, it would really be um, a good idea, more than a good idea, to try to do that. And not only just read it like a regular book, because it's not a regular book to just start and then and start from the beginning and then finish. It is, we believe, um, and I, I, I can just, my spirit <laughs> recognizes that. It's okay. So... When I get up in the morning, I'll look in a mirror to make sure that everything is okay before I go out into the world. Nothing in my teeth, you know, nothing in there that's that's not supposed to be there. Um, the Bible is like a mirror for your inner man, your, your, soul. your soul. There's things that you'll see that you're like, oh, like, mm, I didn't realize I was, uh, okay, I'm starting to feel convicted about there's things that I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing. Um, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Things that you're speaking out, things that you say, um, it really convicts you about being flippant about what you say, how you talk about other people that are made in God's image, people that you might disagree with or not see eye to eye with. 
And I would say for our country, how important it is for us to respect, show respect to those in authority, show respect to those um, that don't think like we do. You're not going to win any um, anybody over to your side by being uh, rude or uh, coming across like you know it all. So I think it's a really important to be able to talk to people and to listen, but to also know what you believe, why you believe it, and then be able to defend um, that if it comes under attack. But again, a lot of times people are just um, getting worked up. And I think that a lot of times we are getting, um, I would say it almost feels like there's a, a, an intention to get people divided, or it seems like there's a, that there's this um, something behind the scenes, and I, I think that's probably a lot, very much true, that there's something behind the scenes that is, is getting people divided on issues. Right. Now, oh, go ahead. And the most important thing about the political uh, season, I believe, is that sharing the gospel with people is the number one way to change the world for the better. I believe that's it's mm-hmm. the yeah. it, that it's better than trying to elect a Democrat or a Republican into office, but bringing someone to the Lord and having them have their life changed by the gospel is going to make more of an impact in this world than any politician can ever make. So I encourage you, instead of getting all worked up about who's going to be the next president, to think more about how can I share the gospel with someone who needs to hear it. Yes, and also, so that's a great point too. Okay, so think about also, it is very hard to be a leader. It's also, it's very hard to be the ones making decisions. And so they need our prayers, they need our support. And even if we disagree with them, we never, I really, I've been very convicted about this. I don't think we should be making fun of anybody, mm-hmm. um, especially in authority, because God is the one that set up authorities. And so if you're making fun of someone in authority, like it really, I, I hope people become un- more convicted about that and and to repent of that because we need to have our leaders backs at least in prayer even if we don't agree with them we need to cover them in prayer we need to cover um the lord tells us to pray for our enemies as well Mm -hmm. and so lately i've been feeling very convicted to pray for our global leaders our national leaders our local leaders and then for those that have a lot of influence have lots of money um, and they're not they've not been elected or they've not put in a position that the people chose them to be in power but they're still, they have a tremendous amount of influence. They need our prayers. Right. But God tells us also to pray for our enemies. So we don't know who's who sometimes. You don't know who your enemy is. You don't know who um, really has your best interest because there there is a lot of deception out there. And I think we have to be very careful about that. Mm-hmm. But I would, oh, go ahead. And that's what I just read where God said he desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So we need to pray for all leaders, whether we agree with them or not politically. And also, there's certain topics. Um, so just, let's say, um, well, so there's the, the, the pro-life versus having pro-choice, um, praying for those situations, praying for people that are really struggling with those issues. Pray for, okay, so we have a lot of people coming into our country and people can get upset about that or people can get upset with our leaders or people can get upset with those that are crossing the border but we also need to be praying for those coming into our country those with good intentions those with bad intentions Mm -hmm. prayer is powerful it is so powerful and i don't think people realize how powerful it is and so when you're in a situation and what i love is is god's word on philippians 4 6 through 7 and i Mm -hmm. This is a verse that we live by because there's so many things that are out of our control. There's so many things that you and I both don't have a lot of control over. But what we do have control over is how we respond and how we articulate those concerns to the Lord. But think about if you want... um, so with children too, I explain this to children a lot too. If you love your parents and you want something, I mean, you want something from your parents, um, the way you approach your parents, the way you talk to your parents is so important. So if you go to your parents and are like, well, you should have done this because I believe I deserve this and you come in with all this attitude, well, 
a wall is just going to come up. You're good. Good luck having any kind of interaction with your parents or for them to be able to hear you. But God instructs us and he says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, every situation, Mm -hmm. by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. So notice with thanksgiving. So that tells us he wants us to think about all the things that he's already done and how he's already protected us, looked after us, equipped us, done all these things for us. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I will say I have been guilty of that in the past of just taking on all the things of the world and carrying them and getting really like, oh, what are we going to do? Or how is this ever going to turn out? Or this looks really scary. (laughs) And then I'll read this verse and I'm reminded, okay, like the God of the universe, the God that created it, that created man and has communicated to us in his, through his own word, tells us how exactly we should come to him. And so as parents, we know this is true too. We've seen it firsthand when a child comes to us and is like, Hey, thank you for all that you do, or thank you for this. And I'm kind of concerned about this. And could you help me with this? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, and that's not to say that your prayers will be answered exactly how you want them to be answered. There's so many things going on behind the scenes. Um, Mm-hmm. Do you have, let's see, the verse on about the principalities, or would you read that if I can pull that up? Let's see. Here it is. All right. Ephesians see? 6 says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's who our enemy is. Our enemy is spiritual. Now, so there's so many things that are going on behind the scenes with people, and we don't know exactly where they're at, but we know that people can change. The Lord can right. change their hearts. Somebody that might be um, have really horrible intentions, if the Lord gets a hold of their heart, mm-hmm. um, and, and He's using, there's, there's people that He's using for His kingdom, for His glory, and it may be not in ways that we can see or understand, but we do need to trust that. So one, I would like to say, encourage you all to not be anxious, to not get worked up, especially this election year, Mm -hmm. to be prayerful, not pray our own agendas though, but to pray for God's will to be done um, and to pray for our global leaders, national leaders and local leaders and our enemies um, and those with huge influence and um, that have lots of money and are doing things behind the scenes. So there's that quote that's out there by a certain individual that says you'll have, they'll have nothing and be happy. And I would say, well, my concern for that person is they'll think they have everything and they'll be miserable because really there's no joy. There's no happiness without Jesus. And you can find contentment in the crazy situations if you have the Lord. And so my prayer for that person is not the, 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 Human reaction, the the reaction in the flesh is to get angry to hear somebody say that and speak that out over so many people. But then there's a concern that I have for that person that they really don't, they're missing it. They're not, they have all this, they have everything they could probably ever want and are still not satisfied. And that's a scary place. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, let's see, so when I pray for global leaders too, and I'm thinking about the kings and queens, princes and princesses, prime ministers, presidents, um, be praying for our Speaker of the House, praying for our Supreme Court judges, our senators, our congressmen and women, governors, mayors, mm-hmm. city council, county commissioners, on and on and on, school board officials, teachers, first responders, all those in the different areas of arts and entertainment. There's just so many things and uh, so many people we can be praying for. So instead of using that energy to be upset frustrated, anxious, we need to take that time to get before the Lord and say, what would you have me do? What can I do in this area of influence that I have? What can I be praying for? Who can I be praying for? And then to pray the Lord's will. Um, Yeah, it's really important to keep in mind that anything that we see in our cultures or cultures from around the world that's decent and pure and good 
actually is the fruit of Christianity. So, for example, human rights and equality and justice, all of those things are the fruit of what Jesus came and planted 2,000 years ago. So keep that in mind as you're praying for leaders and world leaders and local leaders that for them to be uh, surrender their lives to Jesus, the one who died on the cross, rose from the dead on the third day so that whoever believes in him and follows him will have eternal life. Pray that these leaders will come to know Jesus. And that's the things that people who commit their life to Jesus and have influence are the ones that bring about great things in the world, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the gospel, the fruit of Jesus. So I encourage you to pray for those leaders to come to know Jesus. And I know we ought to do another, just a whole episode on this, but just the um, empowerment that God has given women in the Bible Mm -hmm. um, and how many strong women, prayer warriors, leaders. I mean, there's there's so many um, examples of that. Without the gospel, without Jesus coming to the earth and teaching us, there wouldn't be women's rights like we know them today. Women's rights, the, the, the reason that women have the rights that they have is because of what Jesus and Christianity has done. That's the fruit of it. And that may be a hot topic. That may be something you disagree with. But if you'll just come back when we do that episode, and we'll let you know when we do an episode on that. There's so many examples in the Bible of these strong women. And God um, created us women to be a helpmate. And I love that role because we can do a lot of things to help and um, be a helpmate for our husbands, our children, our communities. Um, I think that... Um, I think that the Bible gets such a bad, or Christianity gets a bad rap for that. But if you look at it closer, there's just so much um, really great role model, role models and examples of strong mm-hmm. women. Yep. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, just look at uh, look at countries around the world that are not Christian, and look at how their women are treated. That's that's the proof for you. And I have witnessed that firsthand. Um, okay, mm-hmm. so wanted to read this to you because a lot of times also we think about and this gets to be an argument in our culture too about what needs to happen but as Christians we know that God's kingdom has already started has been established is mm-hmm. and is is growing and so when we pray the Lord's prayer that is another thing I want to encourage people to do is to think about the Lord's prayer when you say the Lord's prayer what that actually means mm-hmm. um, because and and just I'm going to read this to you that is, the, he is, Jesus is the one that told us we ought to pray this way. Mm-hmm. To say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. So... Yes. One of the things, too, with the royal family, we also just kind of wanted to bring this up because it was very strange. Um, Let's see, 11 years ago, I had a major cancer surgery, abdominal surgery, and we also had family members that were coming to take care of us during that time, and then one of our family members had to have abdominal surgery. Also, while they were like, I think the first week they were here to help us, they Mm -hmm. had to have abdominal surgery. So... um, this really got our attention thinking about this and there was a lot of things in the news about with Catherine why it was a 10 to 14 stay in the hospital and um, why she would have to do it take so long to recover so there's a little bit of information I can share about just what abdominal surgery just being someone who's been through it but I mention all this to say what happened with our family during that time was huge like what seemed like a really bad thing Mm -hmm. God used it and turned it around for a really good thing. So I want you to keep uh, Prince William and Princess Catherine in mind when I share some of this stuff with you because there's an enormous amount of pressure on you to try to take care of our family. Um, with your, You had just started a new job. 
our sons were little at the time. Um, I think Ace, well, our youngest was two, and then our oldest was Eight. 10, or I think 10. 10, sorry. <laughs> so he was 10. But anyway, we had young children at the time, and we had been kind of, I mean, like most marriages, struggling just with a lot of stress in our, um, some relationship stresses. We had some, a lot of just things that were going on that were very, very stressful. And then this happened. So, in no way, not implying that she had cancer surgery at all. We know that King Charles now has come out and said that he, um, that they have found cancer or, and hopefully that it's treatable. And we pray for that and we pray for their family and pray for him and his leadership. But Prince William, so he is, um, King Charles is king, um, not only king, but head of the Church of, the Church of England. Mm -hmm. He's head of the Church of England. Now his son, Prince William, may soon be stepping into that role. And when I say soon, five, 10 years, 15 years, we don't know. But he's, there's been some statements that he's made about he's not really, or you can tell where he's just not really sure about a lot of things. And it's not like, I think we all, there's religion and there's this religious kind of show up and do this, show up and do that. And one of the prayers I've been praying for their family is that the church would really come around them and show them the love of Christ, show them what the body of Christ is meant to look like and the church is meant to look like when it ministers. We had so many people come around us and help us during that time. We had Christian nurses um, that were amazing that really, really, I mean, one that prayed over me and had written a book on prayer. And um, so it was so important and it was such a crucial time. So I think we do need to pray for them and their family. They have been through a lot and especially there's been a lot of division in their family recently in the last couple of years. And um, we've also kind of experienced what that was, what that's like too within the family and having issues there. But forgiveness is really important. Forgiveness is huge. Um, but do you want to just talk about what that was like, the stress on you for that when we were going through that? that time yeah if there's a, a lot of stress when you have a family member that's in the hospital for two weeks uh, it's just a lot of uncertainty a lot of unknowns and so it can be very stressful when you're trying to take care of the kids and keep them in school and going but yeah thankfully you know God saw us through it we just kept seeking him through it all and he brought us through it all thankfully but yeah it's hard to describe just how much stress it is, but it, it can be very stressful. And we've talked about this too, about how we would never want to go through that again, but it was a lot of good things that came out of that. Um, it really mm -hmm. made us closer. Um, yeah. It made us appreciate life more and our marriage and our children. And there was a lot of things that God did on my in my heart through that situation. Um, but so that's why I just, this is, this. they talked about this. There's not, um, we don't have, any kind of thing to judge this by. There's not been a situation where the king um, was dealing with something and then also his son's wife um, also dealing with something. And then there's also another family member um, that was that, that was reported with skin cancer. So um, I think it's important to keep them lifted up in prayer, not only because of a health crisis, but also because how that might impact the future and how Prince William may see the Church of England after going through something like that. And when the true, when the church really, what the tr the truth, I say, try to explain this, the way the church is meant to be, that we are a body, it's not a building, that we are a group of believers that come and look after one another, pray for one another, um, encourage one another. That is what it's supposed to look like. And so... I wanted to just share a little bit about how oh, well, I talked about the surgery. The 10 to 14 days in the surgery is basically, um, so somebody, somebody reported like, oh, she was going to have all this great food and it's this great hospital, you know, like mm -hmm. this the, one of the best hospitals. She's probably not going to want to eat anything um, and not have an appetite for a while. When you have abdominal surgery, the reason they don't, um, want you out of the hospital so soon is they want to make sure your intestines have all woken up the right way and are working properly and then with the depending on the type of incision for all that to heal with the muscles that they may have to cut through so but this could be really um with us coming around and lifting them up in prayer um hopefully this will be a nice time for her with her family her children 
for Prince William if he um, can just a lot of times when we go through something like that you feel the prayers of those people around you lifting you up in prayer you feel like God's with you because people are praying for God to be with you and to help right. you with those things that are just seem overwhelming at the time mm -hmm. but um, I have talked about this before. Would you say there's any contributing factor to me getting sick in the first place or mm -hmm. things that you saw ahead of time? Yeah, so you got to be careful. It looks like that there is a chance that what happened to you came out of a, a harboring a place of unforgiveness for someone. And so uh, you got to be careful with that. Uh, it's extremely important to God for us to forgive. He has forgiven us, and he wants us to forgive others and when we hold on to resentment or bitter, bitterness I believe it can lead to to bad things and that may have been the case and also we don't okay so I don't want to imply that anybody that's sick is like holding on to resentment or anything like that I'm saying in my case both Scott and I on our first date um, the first time that we really um, talked about our background it came up that you lost your sister and uh, Terry and she was how old 12 years old to cancer. And how old were you at the time? Seven. Seven. And then, and that, when you shared that with me, I just had a heart. I remember thinking, gosh, how hard that would have been for a child of seven to try to process all that that was going on. And when, and then I shared with him that when I was 20 and my brother um, was very young, close to that age, um, that that's when my mother had breast cancer and was diagnosed and a year almost to the day later passed away. And so we both had uh, had been affected by cancer personally in our family. And my mother was 44 when she was diagnosed and I was 44 when this happened. But before my diagnosis, I had, we had struggled in a situation um, with someone that we love very much, but there was just, it was very hard to communicate with this person and try to have some kind of resolution. And so I remember I was in the car and I would, and I would actually, be thinking I'm forgiving this person or I would say okay I'm gonna walk in forgiveness and I'm going to forgive this person because I know I need to forgive this person um, but I guess I would get worked up again about it and I just it would fester and I would allow it to fester so I actually heard Dr. Mark Rutland and if you don't know who he is uh, you should look him up he has um, just really a lot of insight but he was talking about how holding on to resentment can really affect your health and I got very convicted after hearing him talk about that on the radio and was just called out to the Lord and asked the Lord to forgive me for that. And that also, so we are going to do another episode on forgiveness because mm -hmm. this ties in. So this is kind of think of this as a cliffhanger that we want to talk about this a little bit more with forgiveness. Is forgiveness something that you just do so it doesn't hurt you? Or is there more to that? Because we hear that said a lot you'll hear people say that so we're going to go into more detail in the next episode about forgiveness and how it can affect your health but um, when there is family tension or strife or something going on it can really create havoc with your health and it can be very stressful and it's so important not to let things that are out of your control to get you to a place where um, right. that it could end your life or that it could cut your life short, or keep you from enjoying your family and the things that God has for you. So just remember though from this episode, we want you to just be thinking about with this being an election year, how are you gonna handle this year? Right. Do you have any advice for? Yeah, so uh, I would say, especially on social media, don't, uh, don't follow um, those who post nasty memes. I would say just uh, pray for everyone involved. Pray that the Lord's will be done. Just uh, let's continue to look like the bride of Christ that Jesus wants us to look like, pure and clean, and uh, help us to stay free from, from uh, looking like the world when it comes to politics, above all. And I would say yes, too. Like, it's okay if you want to have a sit-down discussion with somebody and explain if they ask or if the situation comes up, but just to not get into an argument. And it's very hard to, on like online, to be able to communicate fully how you're trying to say something because so much can be read between the lines. I mean, it can be lost in that. Um, 
but do be praying mm-hmm. um, with this election year. Pray for our world is becoming more and more um, closer. We have a lot of leaders. Um, there's a lot of groups out there that is combining the leadership around the world. And so we are entering um, a new phase or age. Uh, so there's a lot that we need to be covering in prayer. I would say don't be anxious about anything. Um, and don't let this don't let this political season get you up in knots and get you all worked up. Um, be praying for the praying for those that are uh, pray for the issues you're concerned about. Pray and ask God to show you what your stance should be on those issues. If you're a Christian and you love the Lord, ask the Lord, do I have this right? Maybe you maybe you think you do, but maybe God there's some things God wants to show you. But I would also advise to spend time in His Word and get to know Him and understand the context of the scriptures that you're reading and understand what was happening before, what was happening after, what's the situation that the scripture is actually being used for. Um, so, if you have any comments, we do have our YouTube. Uh, this will be also on YouTube. So, if you want to leave comments there, please leave your comments, questions. Um, and if you like this podcast, please subscribe. And we're just so thankful that you joined us, and we really appreciate that you spent the time to visit us on this episode of Humble and Bold, uh, the Humble and Bold podcast. So thank you. Thank you.